person body, but all I know is I saw the six by six. What is it about hunting elk that drives grown men to purposefully leave their families and willingly submit themselves to hunger, cold, and fatigue? The answer, of course, is the uncontrollable drive to smell the pungent odor of a rutting bull elk, to feel the mountain walls vibrate with the guttural roar of a herd bull, and to harvest a mountain monarch. Elk stir primeval urges in man to be swallowed in the embrace of a high, wild mountain basin. It makes the sting of freezing winds, the pain of aching lungs, a price worth paying. You guys can give an ice Elk hunting is a surreal experience that touches men to the depths of their being. Rugged men who take no shortcuts, who challenge elk in their most remote haunts, who have endured the heartbreak and exultation of elk hunting, invite you to join them on their special elk hunts. Author and archery expert Paul Brunner hunts the dark timber of West Central Montana and the semi-arid mesas and canyons of northeastern New Mexico home to a thriving herd of elk with a bull to cow ratio of 30 to 100. Lecturer and author Mike Lipinski, who learned his trade hunting the huge brush-bound bulls in the jagged mountains of northwest Montana, will hunt the oak scrub mountains of northwest Colorado. Both men willingly share their years of combined elk hunting experience with you. Our hunts take place during the September rut in Montana, Colorado, and New Mexico in a diversity of environments. All three are prime elk states representing the extreme variations of habitat in which elk thrive. Montana contains tens of thousands of acres of public lands offering great hunting opportunities. Western Montana elk secret themselves at high elevations in dark pockets of timber. After traveling miles during the hours of darkness, they filter into isolated mountain meadows to feed and wallow in shallow seeps. In northwest Colorado, the elk find security in rolling hills and valleys cloaked with a dense layer of oak brush. Groves of aspen grow on the damper north-facing slopes. The acorn crop provides the elk with the protein needed to support large populations of animals. Northeastern New Mexico is a semi-arid habitat of juniper and grass-covered hills and high rocky mesas. Bull elk here grow antlers with long, heavy mane beams and tines and often score above 330 Pope and Young points. Water is at a premium, and elk concentrate at the few natural springs. Oh, I want to set up. What would your idea be of a dream elk hunt? Plenty of daily encounters with big bulls? To hunt in pristine elk habitat? To hunt and learn with the best elk experts? To get that one chance to harvest a big bull? An ample supply of all four are in this video program. Join our sportsmen as they hunt their way down the spine of the Rockies. Our first hunt is in Montana, where huge expanses of prime elk habitat provide high-quality elk hunting. Paul Brunner is joined by his longtime elk hunting pal, Tom Moore, for a hunt in the west central part of the state.
Next morning, Paul and Tom climb up to the high ridges and bugle the basins off each side. This enables them to hunt large areas with minimal effort and pinpoint exactly where the bulls are located. As Tom and Paul top the ridge, a roaming satellite bull, alerted by the rolling rocks, catches them in the open. Tell you, you want to hear the good news? We got about another two hours of prime time, and I just heard the bull just faintly right over that ridge. So, uh, why don't we go see? This time, you cheer for me. <laughs> I'll be glad to. Let's go. Team hunting 50 yards apart, calling for each other, a bull slipped in behind Tom and presented a perfect 10-yard broadside shot. As luck would have it, the cameraman was focused on Paul. You didn't go very far, did you? Uh -uh. You guys kept the bugle last night, riding on it. Congratulations. I got riding on and it was great. See, the one, the one that's ball, he's not huge, uh, bigger than one that we passed this morning. But we heard him coming this way. He was, he was, re I thought you guys had him stuck. He was going, Right there, though, and he rubbed a tree. In fact, we can probably go down there and find that tree. Anyway, I mean, I didn't have a 10 yard shot. It was perfect. He walked right behind that tree right there. I drew my bow. When he came out, I let him have it. He walked away. He didn't go anywhere. He walked right up there and looked at me again. I couch up to him, and he just looked. I thought, well, I'm going to just make sure. So I got another arrow out. He started up the bank, and I thought, no, he's looking bad. And he started to wobble. And he just got this far as he got. I can't believe this. It was right. my turn to shoot. <laughs> After about 10 setups for you, you're a turkey. Let's go see what he's got for the red one. I just found this arrow right there where I shot it. Oh, look. I had clear enough to the cresting of the light in there, too. You know something? You know, your comment about having good penetration? <laughs> it got a 30 yard recovery with no trailing. Well, I'm going to see if I can follow it and find some blood. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, there isn't a whole lot of blood. In fact, he stood right here and just looked around, and I thought, boy, I don't want to spook this bull because there's no blood. But I, but I knew I had him double lung. Yeah, he's, well, he was double lung. He, he didn't know he'd been hit with the arrow. He just walked right up here and stopped and looked back at me, and I couch up to him, and he's like, well, what could be wrong? I've taken three bulls that have tried to bugle after I shot him, had no idea they were hit. One of them looked like, you know, like this. He looked around and see if some other bullet stuck him with his horn or something, but they don't, they can't feel that arrow, let me tell you. It's a little short to run the quiver, but I'll be lucky. Okay, now you've got to hike with us and call for me now. I have to say I didn't call that boy. He was not paying attention to my cow calls at all, but you guys kept him viewing, and I thought, if I get close enough, he'll come. Well, see, what happened was he thought I was a bigger bull, and he had, well, we saw some of his cows. Oh, you did? And he must have decided that I was beyond him and come back this way. Oh, damn. Beautiful shot. Look at that. I mean, you don't get a better long shot than that. Yeah. Line block from the way I've seen you shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you said that. Since you only take a picture last night. Shoot. I believe I did say that. <laughs> but you notice you've got an elk and I haven't. <laughs> Hey, well, congratulations, buddy. Thank you. I'll tell you, that's fantastic. Thank you. That's the one picture that I want that I'll probably get a blow off of. As they say in Oxford, you've done good, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Tiger. 
The next day, Steve Gingras, another of Paul's hunting pals, joins the fun, hunting the same area. Steve had several more encounters over the next couple of days, but as elk hunting often goes, Lady Luck wasn't on their side and neither were successful. Now let's join Mike Lopinski in the high country of northwestern Colorado. Mike was invited by Paul Howard, owner of Proline Excursions, to hunt areas he outfits. The state of Colorado boasts the largest elk herd in the West, with a harvest of about 50,000 elk annually. Much of the prime elk habitat is infested with oak brush. Some may complain about it, but Mike found oak brush to be an excellent cover for close range elk encounters. The first day of the hunt is spent scouting the area, and it sure doesn't take Mike long to find numerous cows and rutting bulls. Good 
goodness gracious, there's more coming. Mike has harvested many bull elk with bow and arrow, but even the experts sometimes encounter frustrations. And this coyote really gives Mike the business. Congratulations, Mike, you've got a coyote to respond. <laughs> Only on my elk hunt would this happen. The next morning, Mike bugles along a high ridge, trying to locate running bulls. Not far down the trail, he encounters a herd bull, but the bull quickly leads his cows away from his challenger. Right up ahead of me, I just heard him bugle. Just gotta get a little bit. Hold it, hold it. What's this on the right? Just hold this. Uh, this is a bachelor bull. I don't think it's a herd bull. He come in silently to my bugling. Oh no, now what? He's right between me and the herd bull. I don't know how big he is. I just, he's got a good body on him. I don't know about the antlers. I can't. Oh boy. Oh yeah, yeah, he's a keeper. He's a dandy. Look at that limb right in front of his chest. I can't get a shot. Boy, he's looking right at me. I can't move. I gotta wait. <laughs> Just come on now. Come on. Come on. Move a little bit. There he goes. There he goes. Okay. Steady, Mike. Steady. Okay. Pick a point. Come to a full draw. Okay. Get ready. Get. Oh. so nervous. That was it. Boy, what an 800 pound bull elk comes in on you. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I live for that. You get all your ducks lined up in a row, you get those bulls in just like I did. Man, 25 yards away, and I just hit on some brush right underneath. Oh. But the good news is I get down another one now. While Mike was held up by the bachelor bull, the herd bull in his harem got far ahead and sought bedding cover for the day. Mike decides to pull back and wait until the evening hunt. As the evening shadows deepen, the elk are up and feeding, and the herd bull again bugles out a warning to his challengers. Mike again takes up the hunt. to that herd bull, I run into these cows. I'll tell you, they're the worst thing to run into, especially when you're trying to get to that herd bull thing. All they're going to do is bark or catch you in or something and spook. I've had more successful seeming hunts ruined by these cows. Darn, look at that, right at me. The herd bull holes up in a lush, secluded draw. There are cows and satellite bulls popping out everywhere. Suddenly, a satellite bull emerges from cover and glares in Mike's direction.
He is angry. Mike's continual calling finally brings him in. Here it comes. I could hear the brush snap. It's just right. Come over to my left. I can. Yep. There. There he is. There he is. I can see him. Huh? Oh, there. He's barely ten yards away. He's just on the other side. Boy, this wind is terrible. Come on, just a couple more steps. Jeez, I'm like, just on the other side of this bush. I can't believe it. There he. Okay, get ready. Boy, something stopped him. Something stopped him. He must have caught something. He must have caught just a little bit of my scent. Come on, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, this is too much. Oh, well, you can't fool their nose. Oh, there he goes. long enough to chase this other pasture bull out of the way. Hmm. Just keep on our ass up. Oh boy, look at this. There he comes. There he 
yes. There he is. This is a dandy. This is your classic example of a herd bull, getting a herd bull to come in. I chased him for about three quarters of a mile, kept on pushing, kept on harassing him. Finally, you could see across the draw there and he's just, man, just screaming at me. I kept on harassing him. Finally, he kept on looking back there and he trotted out and looked at me and he looked back at the cows and said, ladies, you just wait for a while. Just, you can see him coming. He come right up there and I made a perfect chest shot. This is a, really, this is a height of, of, of elk bow hunting is when you can fool that herd bull. I'll tell you, that's really great. Man, I'm really happy. This is a moment that's gonna live with me forever. Now let's travel with Paul and Tom to Cimarron, New Mexico to meet outfitter Randy Davis to challenge never before bugled bulls. Randy plans to include archers in his future hunts. Randy, how are you? Good. <laughs> well, that's a long drive down here from Montana. <laughs> Look at who she is. How you doing? Boy, this is neat. Hi, this is Tom Moore. Randy Davis. Good to meet you. You've talked to him on the phone, I guess. A couple times so. Boy, this is really slick. Nice. Really nice. We've had lots of rain, lots of moisture. The country looks great. Gosh, you're crazy. Okay, and the, cool. the number one question. Elk? We've got elk spotted and the wall is located, so... Oh, boy. They laid it down to the bottom. See these parts? Oh, I've got the hunt to the top so we can see these openings. Yeah. We come into these parts and we've been in the night and then come out in the daytime and dead up on these ridges. That's some of the prettiest elk habitat I've seen. I would, you know, just from my experience at home, I'd rate that last park up there nice in the Cirque. That to me would be the best. To clearly show how this unbelievable hunt unfolded, it will be shown just as it happened. The technique used was to roam the country bugling to locate the bulls.
Ain't it too small to shoot? Oh, yeah. Too small. Well, that's, that's fun playing with. After running through a gauntlet of bulls, including this one, the hunters encounter a group of mule deer bucks. Although still in velvet, some carry respectable racks. The nature of this semi-arid open country can give the most skilled mule deer hunter a tough challenge. The elk hunters finally reach the head of the basin and have an incredible experience.
was about 320 or better. I mean, I, I just saw him. He was just kind of going up into the brush, but he was one nice big bull. This is a really crazy wind situation. I mean, okay, in New Mexico, you almost always have a downdraft in the morning and evening. And here we got a strong updraft. Going around up on the ridge top was a good idea. But this darn wind, I, I never get elk bugling really well in wind compared to silent. But there's got to be three bulls in here. I think we've done the right thing by getting above them. There's a big bull in the town right down here. Yeah. Where's the wall right down here? Do you think they'll come into that wall? It was pretty hot today. They should.
On the morning of the second day, Paul and Tom enjoyed a rare episode that astonished even these seasoned sportsmen. Listen carefully for the sound of clashing antlers and the soft, guttural clucks of a huge herd bull as he battles a contender. This graphic illustrates the hunter's positions while the elk battled in the brush just yards away. Only Tom has a clear view. Six by six that he beat. It ran by you. You couldn't get a shot. No, it was close. I, had, I had, would have had a shot, except he was running by me and he was going through the brush. And I had my boat about half draw, but I could just never get a shot. I never saw the one that beat him. What did he look like? Oh my god! First of all, they came out. They were fighting right in front of me. Yeah, yeah, right here. It's all torn out. Right down this little sendero right here. He, you remember the one that I didn't feel good about shooting last night? Yeah. Figured like three ten, ten three twenty. This bull is huge. I mean. He's probably 350, 360. I mean, he's a big, he is as big as the boy you got in your dad is 366. Big, long back tines and heavy, man. He was coming to me. I could see legs. He was coming right to me. And then he got in a fight with that bull. I'd had him at about 10 yards broadside. I saw you start to draw your belt. Oh, I was looking at the shot. Hey, man, I'll tell you. I didn't know whether I was going to have heart failure first or wet my drawers. I just, I mean, oh. Look where they dug this ground up. The one, the big bull, just pushed that little bull back and he was just whipping his head. The little bull. Well, it was a big six by six. I mean, it was 300 plus. They were, they're coming, they're coming right at us. Oh, it's a herd bull with cows. Oh, man. Oh, look at him. He's been rolling in that mud and throwing it everywhere. I'm going to get him to bugle. Watch that.
I smelled it. Boy, I tell you, this is the squirreliest wind condition I've ever hunted in. This last couple of days has been terrible. There he is. He's not a real big sense of the truth. I'm taking him anyway. that was covering his lung area, so I shot in through the shoulder wow. blade. Where were you? I want okay, to you stand yeah, here, you. and I'm going to pace this off, because I, I thought 15 yards, but it's not that far. I was behind that oak bush right there. Yeah, I was standing right here, 12 yards. I don't know how this camera looked from here, but this is the bush I told you I had to step around, and I was in it, and there was just almost no sound, and he's right there, and he screamed, and that's when I moved. But he stopped right there, man. And I could see the shoulder blade perfectly, and I knew I had him with these heavy arrows, and I just whacked him. <laughs> yeah. I got to just put my, my feet in your trap. Okay, that's where I first stood. Right here. And you take him through. Well, see, here's what I tried to do. I tried to be there so that in case he came this way, I had an opening, right. and I'd be able to move. And when I realized he was coming there, he cut loose with a horrendous bugle. I backed up to here so I couldn't shoot through that gap. And when he stopped, if he'd gone another foot, I'd have gone behind the shoulder. And I knew it was downhill slightly, and everything was right. Boy, and I just... So he stopped right there? Oh, he stopped, and he looked that way. That's Remember that. When you have a, a bull close... Cup your mouth so that, well, you do it turkey hunting, so the, the call sounds over that way. If he had looked this way, I'd have been dead. Oh. And, I mean, boy, I just nailed him. It was beautiful. Man, I'm still shaking. <sighs> I, mean, I knew he was down from the sounds, but I was following his tracks. And I just, I got right about here, and I looked over, and man, there he was. I mean, jeez. I bet you just, I bet you're Oh, Tom. <laughs> Tom, I'll tell you, after bugling in so many, after bugling in so many bulls, oh, and not being able to let an arrow go because of circumstances, this was the ultimate for me. Look at the size of the rack on him. I tell you, I almost had a coronary thrombosis or whatever those dudes are when he came up that hill. My heart was hammering so badly, and somehow I told myself, pick a spot and calm down. And I did it. You know, it's just all those hours of shooting. Look at that animal. Man. 
Good shot. Boy, he's got a nice yeah. rack on him. What's he, about a 310? Uh, more than that, probably. You think so, huh? Jeez, look at him. Boy, he's got some nice fourth points, huh? Uh, miss something? I swore I wasn't going to get another mount, but I think I'm going to have to. <laughs> Went completely through the shoulder blade into the lungs. That, yeah, that's right. The hey, blade. 680 grains. That's what it takes for you. Try to now? God, that ball of mine is just dead. Wait, wait. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And now I get to call all the That's right. Yeah, squarely it says, well, again, I've, I've got two two elk urine wafers on. I couldn't stand myself. I mean, this time the wind was right and it was blowing into my face. And I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this camel with this uh, scrub oak and this stuff, this camel, this uh, mossy oak stuff with the green leaves in it is great. I'm going to get you an outfit. Okay. In fact, remind me, we'll call them today and have some second air some out to you for the rest of the week. Okay. Gotta get that gut hook in under the skin. There we go. Boy, that thing is slick. I just got it the other day. Karen gave it to me. Figured she'd keep me out of the hospital. All right, now. I got you. Yep. I got it. Yep. I got it. Oh. All right. Hey. Let's go to camp, guys. This is the first bull out of the last dozen that I've been involved in a kill that we ever, I mean, all the rest we've had to quarter and backpack. You know, we can't believe we got this in the back of a vehicle like this. The beginning of day four was unsuccessful. However, toward evening, the hunters got into a concentration of several bulls moving down from the juniper ridges onto a sagebrush flat. Because it was late in the day, and many of the bulls were some distance from cover and difficult to stalk, it was decided to pattern their movements and return the next day under better circumstances. Watch how the evening unfolds. Demonstrating dominance while expending little energy, the bigger bull intimidates the younger one simply by laying his enormous rack back along his flanks. Yeah, see, he's bluffing out the little guy looking. Well, that one there is 
I would you say 350. That one over there looks to me like it could have even higher tops. This one out here looked he had real heavy mass. He was about around at 340. Oh change. I you know I've run it in a lot of places, but I've never seen anything like this. The end of a perfect evening, and Paul and Tom are eager to return the following day. To minimize scent and noise, Paul suggests that Tom and Randy hunt alone this morning. to you and all once he just caught my wind. It just wasn't anything we could do. I knew we had to get up around here, but they beat us to the punch, so. But he wasn't much of a bull. He had one antler that didn't have any time not to speak up. I didn't get a look at him. I just saw the cow. He was flat coming. You had him. I went to the behind the other scrub oak and started bugling that rick in the oak with a stick.
Tom's angle, the bull never cleared the brush. He never had a shot. He did a great job of calling. They came right up and they wanted to cut my hands. Okay. Paul and guide Robert Gonzalez join Randy and Tom at midday to discuss technique and to hunt together the last afternoon. To, to calm as much as they can. But you know, one of the things that's really important for you, you get that guy in a good position and you move off to call in a setup. So let's say your elk's bugling there. You'll be here to call. You know he's going to come towards you, usually in a straight line. Sometimes they'll try and circle downwind, but I've only had that happen once here so far in this hunt. You get your hunter in the best wind situation off to the side, about 20 yards, 15 yards of where you think the line is. Sometimes you don't have a lot of time, but you know, you've seen us set up quite a bit now. Get him behind that tree, drop down a little bit below him, back 40, 50 yards. And, that, and then make sure you tell him each day, now, when I call that bull by you, wait until he has actually passed you slightly. Two things happen then. He isn't going to see them draw. He's looking at you, and he's already passed. But he's also giving you that slightly quartering away shot where you go in behind the elbow and right into the knee. And what I've found is if, you can, if the guy will let that bull walk by, some of his excitement drops a little bit, you know. When you first see him come up, I mean, here's these huge horns and grass hanging off of him or whatever else, but as he lets the bull go by, he's thinking, okay, I've got to let him go by. I've got to wait till that front leg swings forward to give me the best opening, and it calms him down. And uh, this is the way, you know, setups are critical, and they're tied into shot placement. But make sure your hunter never takes a brisket on shot Make sure he takes no going away shots. And if he's got an elk that's it just doesn't feel right, like Tom passed on a bull the other day, what, 18 yards, but he just didn't feel good. And he's killed a lot of game, and he, he knew that if he let the arrow go, you know, his confidence was down. Yeah, yeah I've passed some shots here I should have probably taken, but, you know, there's so many elk, I figured I'll still get my chance. Well, you sleep nights, too. Yeah. You know, neither one of us could bear the thought of having an animal out here wounded and because we did the wrong kind of work. setup failed to bring in either of the two bulls. So the hunters pause before the final evening's hunt to thank Randy for an experience that exceeded all expectations. I'd just like to thank uh, Ed Wolf, my good friend, and uh, Stony Wolf Video for introducing me to one of the best kept 
uh, up until now at least, elk secrets in the country as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, I'd like to thank you, Randy, and, you, and all your staff. They've been, you've been great. And uh, we're going out for the last evening tonight. And the fact that I haven't killed a bull <laughs> is certainly not your fault. <laughs> I've passed up, uh, I don't know how many call-ins we've had, but I've passed up lots and lots of smaller bulls. And I've passed up some shots at bigger bulls that I have second thoughts about now. But, <laughs> Um, I'll be back. You can depend on that. And uh, you've got some uh, wonderful hunting here, and you've got great, great people. Well, thank you, Tom. I, uh, I've enjoyed hunting both of you uh, and having you out here on the CS, and hopefully having you back again. Uh, it's been a, a real good hunt. We've seen lots of elk, and uh, I've learned a lot about a lot about bow hunting and different different bows and techniques, and uh, and hopefully uh, getting you another. Another whack at a big bull next year. Look at that. There's another huge one that's been in a while coming in from the right. Look at him. He's chasing that cow and he's got his head down. Yeah. Although the evening hunt was unsuccessful, Tom and Paul witnessed a spectacle that defied description, culminating a never to be forgotten elk hunt. A bunch of the big bulls are back in the timber. I can't believe it. Here comes the one out of the timber. Look at him. Come yeah, see, I think that's the biggest one. He looks to me like he's 360 or better. Uh, I mean, I realize it's a long way, but no, he's not real long. Got a lot of points on it. There's one behind it. Yeah. Look, look the other one after him. Yeah. But there's the big one. There's the real monster coming out of the timber. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at him. Okay, he's chased them all. Up. He's got a cow in heat. Look, there's five bulls coming towards him from the left. Look at that. There's two bulls chasing that same cow. Yeah, see what's happening. They got one in heat. By the way, Tom, I told Randy to book us four slots in this hunt for the next 30 years. <laughs> Listen to that. Oh, there's, there's a cow getting uh, bred. See? See him? Oh, yeah, he's bigger. Look at that. First time I've seen that. Go for it, dude. Huh. See, with that poor moon, boy, she's going to be all night long. Is that the herd bull up there? I think there's two or four herd bulls up there, Tom. Oh, there he goes. He's on her again. Look, look, there's a bull going in there, the black one. Look at him. He's going in there. Yeah, look, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to see a fight. Another bull coming in. Oh, 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 look, there he goes. When he turns his back, the other one runs in. He just can't keep up with all of them, can he? No. Now there's another one coming in there. We've got one cow in heat and about four bulls trying to... I've never seen anything like this in my life. It's unbelievable. Sixteen bulls out there. I hear them, but I can't see them. On the right hand side of the whole bunch. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. See them, Ed? Um, um, great. Look at that! They're, boy, they're kicking each other. Look at it.
free copy of paul and karen brothers new catalog call